we will build our understanding of Azure on the foundation of cloud concepts. And the reason why we take a moment and define some of the terms and technologies behind cloud concepts is because it is an exam objective, as you can see here. So as you can see, not only is it important just for general understanding of Microsoft Azure to understand first the cloud concepts upon which it is based, but it is also testable knowledge here, the differences between CapEx and OpEx and infrastructure as service and software as service and all of these kinds of technologies that's explored in the lessons in this section. So to begin this exploration, let's talk about the difference between on-premises computing environment versus a cloud computing environment. Because no matter what your task is, if you want to stream video, if you want to host a website, if you want to store a bunch of data in a database, you need to store that information or stream that video from somewhere, some piece of hardware. Now, if you're brand new to these types of concepts, I want you to think about the differences between something like Spotify versus owning CDs or Netflix versus owning DVDs or even Uber versus ownership of a car. And that may be the most appropriate analogy here is the difference between Uber versus a car. Depending on where you live and the geography of your drive to work and things like that, it can make more sense to just subscribe to transportation using something like Uber versus owning a car and making the car payment and paying the interest on that car and paying for the fuel in that car and the maintenance of that car and the property taxes on that car. So again, it can make a lot more financial sense just to simply subscribe to a transportation service using something like Uber. So when it comes to computing resources, when we're talking about on-premises, we're talking about an ownership model. So if you think of a company that existed or started up maybe 20 years ago, really your only choice was an ownership model where you would purchase a server and then you might install software to let you manage your users. That would be Active Directory. You might install software that would let you host and manage a website. That might be IIS. And you might install a database that would let you manage your customer orders and customer data. And that might be something like SQL. Now, 20 years ago, maybe that company starts to grow and then the computing needs start to expand because they can't all be hosted effectively on one server. So what typically happened is that you would have each of these services installed on different servers throughout the enterprise. So in this case here, you needed to buy three different pieces of hardware, three different operating systems, three different applications that reside on those operating systems, and the hardware and software requirements for each of these resources that a company might use would run into the thousands of dollars. So now that company starts to grow and the ownership or the on-premises model starts to look like this. You might have something that's on-premises that's in an office in New York City where you have servers that look like this, but now you have customers or users that are spread throughout the globe and you might need them in a different city like San Francisco. So now you essentially need to take the same information that lives in New York City and you need to replicate it to San Francisco so that the users there and the customers there can get served by the computing resources that are closest to them. Now, the alternative to this ownership model where you buy all of the hardware, all of the software, all of the networking that hooks these things together is that you have a rental model. Using cloud concepts, you can just buy a subscription to Active Directory, to IIS or web apps, or to a database. And you can do all this, as we will see, you can do it all from a web browser. What's also beneficial about this rental model is that as needs change in an enterprise, you can add additional web apps and scale out that way, or you can scale up, say you need a bigger database, you can always rent more space or more computing power for your data warehouse. What's more, the cloud provider, not only do they provide the physical infrastructure where Active Directory lives, where the web apps live, where SQL lives, but it also may, depending on your subscription, depending on what you rent, it may replicate this data between different data centers 
one sitting on the East Coast and one sitting on the West Coast. Again, as the end user, the subscriber, you don't need to worry about any of those underlying hardware, software, and networking considerations. All you need is a browser and a connection to the internet. So there are four main services that you subscribe to with your cloud computing model that I want to introduce you to right now. When you subscribe to a cloud provider, you are subscribing to Compute Power, and this usually takes the form of a Linux or a Windows-based server and or web applications. You are subscribing to storage, so if you need to store files, if you need to store data in a database, you are subscribing to that service. You also consume networking resources, and these are the secure connections between the provider and your company. And you're also subscribing to analytics. And this is just visualizing the telemetry and performance data of what's going on in your subscription tenant. By the way, telemetry, if you're not familiar with the term, it is just kind of a fancy way of saying performance data. Telemetry, its Greek roots are tele for remote and metrion for measure. So it's a way to remotely measure what's happening with the resources that you are renting. So there you go. There's your entomology lesson for the day. In addition, I want to throw out three technologies that you should be familiar with as you start to lay the foundations of your cloud concepts. One of those three technologies is that of a virtual machine. A virtual machine is an emulation of a computer. And if I had to guess, I would bet that most of you taking this course are familiar with the concepts behind a virtual machine. In fact, you may have one or more virtual machines running on your laptop computer right now. And you know the idea behind a virtual machine then. You have a piece of hardware that can run a Mac OS and a Windows OS both on the same piece of hardware. And that exact same concept applies to subscription to virtual machines. You can spin up a Linux virtual machine and a Windows virtual machine in the same Azure subscription. Another technology that is central to cloud computing is that of a container. And a container is an isolated execution environment for an application. So without getting too far down the rabbit hole of what a container is, just think that what a virtual machine is to a piece of hardware, a container can be to a virtual machine where you have multiple containers that live on a single virtual machine and each of those containers can run either different applications or the same applications, just allowing for multiple connections to the same app that is being served to your end users. The third technology I want to at least introduce you to here, and we will spend more time in this course defining these things and giving you some examples, is that of serverless. Now, serverless is a bit of a misnomer because ser there's always going to be a server involved somewhere. But what serverless refers to is the idea of running application code without creating, configuring, or maintaining a server. And this is a technology that is ideal for running automated tasks. The code runs and then stops, and then that's all you pay for. You pay for just the time that the code needs to execute a task. And this is a significant way in which it differs from the models behind purchasing a container or renting a container or even purchasing and renting a virtual machine. So to summarize, we have four main services you should be familiar with for the time being and three technologies. So we've talked about some of the what's. Now let's talk about some of the why's.